Welcome to Cloudy Edinburgh and before you ask, yes I have been to the hairdresser, had a little trim, not much else, um, just trying to figure out <laughs> how to like sort of match my clothes and style everything with the with the new do but um loving how shiny it's looking that is not the topic of today's video though um it's actually um my flatmate jill's fake birthday um so it's her birthday tomorrow but we've both taken a day off work and decided to go on a little book shopping trip together a little girls day out visit all our favorite bookshops spend some money, <laughs> celebrate the wonders of ageing and I thought I would take you along with me because I know how much you love visiting bookshops in Edinburgh and um, seeing what I pick up and maybe what Jill picks up too. That is essentially the purpose of this vlog. It's a little book shopping day tour vlog out in Edinburgh. That That's what it is. Um, and hopefully you will enjoy coming along with us. So yeah, let's um, let's go. It's time to go. <laughs> Having a fun birthday day out. Oh my god, look at my tan! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Buying lots of random things. What'd you buy? I've got a fringed bag. Yeah. For my little cool girl heart. I have a. Um, what did I get? A reproduction of an original Beanie Baby. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some stickers. Some stickers in a notebook. Um, and a mug. And a mug. And hair slime. Yes. <laughs> Um, and I've got a My Little Pony, a fish hair clip, um, some stickers. <laughs> no. Nope. Oh, yeah, I bought well, a book from Mum and a quiz book. since Jill has been in a vlog, even though we now even live together. Even though I'm around all the time, she hasn't invited me on. Until now. <laughs> yeah, I just haven't wanted to invade your space. She doesn't like me anymore. <laughs> this, is not the, this is not true. But we've had a lovely day out, haven't we? Yes. Say yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've had a lovely day out, uh, pre-birthday shopping for Jill, and we both got some books, so I thought, 
Not as many as usual. I know. If you've seen any of Jill and I's, like, I mean, from years ago, we've not done a book haul in ages. No. But we always had quite a few books. But yeah, Jill has three and I have four. So. Will you go first then? then oh, yeah. Trade okay. On. okay, well, the first one I got was actually second hand. And it, it's like not really, a, like, it's it's a book, but it's not a book. Do you know what I mean? It's not a book it's for not, reading. It's not a book. It's a quiz book. <laughs> So I got this in St. Columbus Hospice Charity Shop and it's the Penguin Ultimate Trivia Quiz Book. It's massive. And we did pre... We tested it. Yeah, and there's like a mixture of... I got quizzed. Yeah. Hard and like not... And like ones you can get and ones that are a lot harder. I thought it said 21. No, it was £2. It was £2, not £21. Over 10,000 questions and answers. I don't know if this is still in print. I'm I'm really curious actually, but I do love a quiz. Do you want me to I'll ask you another question? The one that I can get right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I want to look smart for the people. Oh gosh. Um, I am okay, joking. what is 1970 in Roman numerals? I don't know. Yeah, I actually have no idea either. Uh, Great. We, we didn't do classics degrees. What <laughs> point? That's got nothing to do with knowing what 1917. Um, oh, that's, that's the answer to a different question. I was thinking that doesn't make any sense. It's MCMLXX. Okay, wait, I'll ask you this one. Who is the America, American state of Virginia named after? Oh, um, Elizabeth first. Yeah, well done! See, so I didn't know that. This is going to be hours of fun. I'm very excited about it. I think this was a good find. It was a very good find. Okay, thanks. Your turn. My turn. My first book is, I don't know if you can shine any light on it is Tolkien, What Middle Earth Means to Us Today. Um, and it is basically, as it says in the title, it's all about how we interpret Tolkien today in the modern era. Is it, well, it is still valid, of course, but apparently it's all about friendship and the environment and how Tolkien is used to interpret that in the modern world. It's so, it's so relevant to you. It's so good. And if anyone has ever read any of the Inkling books, 404 Inklings, yeah. um, they're sort of like short essays about things like Shit's Creek and how, how what that means to yeah, the modern the world. Cultural significance yeah. of it. I and think I think nice. this is like a big version of one of them. All about Tolkien, that, which is very me. Yeah. Um, so I actually, the, most of the books I ended up buying new were children's books. Um, the next book I bought in the Edinburgh Bookshop, and I'd not heard of it before, but it was part of a series um, of animal nonfiction. This is the world's most atrocious animals. Uh, or are they actually? I just noticed. Uh, asterisks or are they? Or are they just defending themselves? Um, and it's just, it's like basically really dangerous animals and animals that are like slightly obscure. Like, well, we had a flick through. Some of them are quite, what like the grizzly bear was in here. He's not obscure. But then there's some things that I'm not as familiar with um, and telling you about how dangerous they are. Sorry. <laughs> or how dangerous Gina is. <laughs> dangerous Gina is with a, it's a honey badger. Yeah, I knew it was a honey so badger. So cute illustrations, fun animal facts, and I love learning about it. <laughs> natural world from children's books no adult books for me oh and it's uh by philip bunting very nice <laughs> my next one is another little heart well i say another little hardback i've got two um it's columbus bones by i don't even know david gregg um and this is the fourth in what's called the darkland tales and each one is um a, something to do with scottish history and an author takes it and does a little reworking of it so there was one about david rizzio who was murdered by um mary queen of scots husband and his men and then there was one about a witch trial that the jenny fagan yeah, hex. hex and then there was one about bonnie prince charlie i can't remember what that was called and this one is about um saint columba or a viking that defends the no wait wait saint so well, i got the first book in saint columba's hospice and then you bought a book about saint columba Imagine. I don't know why that's like. And <laughs> um, then my next children's book I got in Waterstones, and this is one that I was actually really excited to come out in paperback. I've been waiting for it. It's Imelda and the Goblin King by Bryony Mae Smith, and it is just stunning. It's like a dark, like humorous modern day children's fairy tale, and the illustrations are stunning. Look at that. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous, right? Like, I don't, I'm not going to do this, so don't judge me, but sometimes I just want to rip up these children's books and make them into prints. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And mm -hmm. just put them on the wall because they're so beautiful. Um, I won't do that. Who I'll just read it. I think I've seen this before. So it's the same um, author and illustrator, Brian Amy Smith, um, and it's published by Flying Eye Books. Um, yeah, and it's about a little girl who ends up in the go Goblin Kingdom. So excited. Excited to read this. Children's books. <laughs> and exactly. my last book is Northwoods by Daniel Mason, which I've been waiting on for a while. And it is about uh, one house, I think it's in Massachusetts. 
um, but it's in New England in America. And it's one house over four centuries and all the different people that live there. Um, I don't know if it's going to be creepy or say something about buried secrets and whatnot, mm. but um, it's not one family, it's just in a different people own it all the time. So it goes through all the, the history of the, this one house. And that's me, that's all my books. Oh yeah, well, I have one more. Um, I also have a fiction novel that is for adults. Um, this is Rouge by Mona um, Awad, which is um, the same author that wrote Bunny. I don't know if you did that. Everyone was talking about Bunny for a little while. It got a lot of praise um, and it was meant to be quite like a horror-esque, kind of sinister um, literary yeah. novel. I don't know if... I, don't, I haven't read Bunny, but I heard a lot of good things about it and I sort of had in the back of my mind that I might check it out eventually. But then I saw um, that she has this new book out, Rouge, and it sounded so interesting because it's described as Snow White meets Eyes White Shut. I think it's... Um, got creepy fairy tale elements but it's set in the modern day and it's about a woman who discovers that her estranged mother has passed away and um, in learning this she then comes back in touch with like her her family and where her mother's from and learn more about her mother and who she was and why she died and maybe there's something a bit mysterious and I think her mother was also very um I mean I don't know if vain's the right word but very like obsessed with her appearance and she was obsessed with mirrors and I guess that's how it's going to tie into Snow White and I, I don't know exactly but I like all those themes. That sounds creepy. And yeah and I'm very in the mood for horror. I the like minute. the cover as well. Yes so those are our books. Not as bad as it could have been. No <laughs> we did also buy stationery and second-hand clothes and Joe bought a beanie baby so oh and my little fish. And a fish clip. <laughs> So um, the money went other places, um, but yeah, thanks, thanks for coming along with us today. Um, we'll, we'll I'm be, so glad to be back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let me know if you want Jill to feature again soon. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.